today we're going to take a look at some alternate button pockets that we can do. So um, for the most part, we're going to do it this way that I showed you in the other video and the way that we did it in the normal shirt draft um, that was last week's assignment. But there are some alternate ways we can do it and I want to show you a few examples of what I mean um, depending on what we want to do with our shirt. So the first one I want to show you is how to do a contrasting color button placket. Um, which I have an example right here. So as we can see, the button placket is a lovely sort of white, which stands out really nicely against the black. Um, we can do this, of course, with any sort of color contrast or fabric contrast, just to sort of make the shirt a little bit snazzier if we want. So um, the way we do this is actually fairly easy. So let's open up our bodice sloper and uh, make this button placket. Um, this is fairly easy, so obviously you may um, be already jumping to the conclusion that this needs to be a separate pattern piece because it's a separate piece of fabric, separate type of fabric, and you are absolutely correct. Um, so we're going to have to make a separate pattern piece for this button um, placket. So let's go to piece, new piece, create rectangular piece. Now let's name it button placket as it is. And what I want to do is I want to match the length of my center front where the button placket is going to run down. And if we remember, that was 14 and a half inches. Now, if you've altered your neckline, it might be a little bit less. Um, that just depends on your style of your shirt, but it should be whatever your center front is. Now, the width is going to be double what you want your button placket width to be. So um, let's just do our button placket figuring right now. Let's assume I want a one inch button placket that will accommodate a button um, that's maybe 75, 0.75 inches in uh, diameter, um, which would be 3 fourths inch in diameter, and of course that makes it about a 3 eighth inch radius. So depending on what your button size is, you're gonna decide how wide you want your button placket, and however wide it is, you're going to double it to make this pattern piece. So I said I wanted a button placket that is one inch wide, so we're gonna make it two inches wide for the pattern piece. And this is gonna give us enough to make the button placket and then fold back to finish the back as well. So just like we folded back the button placket extension in the normal version, we need, of course, to finish the back and we have that need that extra fabric to fold back um, right here. So I'm going to say OK. And let's turn that upright. And what's nice about this is that's really kind of all you need to do. Um, obviously, we need to put in some finishing touches and information, but drafting wise, that's about it. So what else do we need to do? Well, we do need to put the buttons on there. Um, so let's remember, so if we, I'm just going to sort of line this up how it will go. So we have a half an inch here and a half an inch here straddling the center front. That will leave the other inch to be able to be folded back to create the backing of our button placket. So um, that means our center front is going to be a half an inch from this edge here. And that's where our buttons are going to go. So I'm going to grab my on, uh, uh, create point on contour tool and place a point um, in make grading uh, right where that center front is going to be. So half inch again from the edge there. And now let's put in our buttons. And remember, I uh, decided that this was going to be about a three-quarter inch diameter button. That would make it a three-eighth inch radius, so it'll be about that size. And, you know, we've got 14 and a half inches to work with, so let's, I don't know, let's try 13. That looks fine to me. And say okay. 
And let's just line this up so I can show you sort of what it looks like. So there we are. We've got the buttons going down the center front. This is where our button placket is going to begin. And then we have ample amount of fabric here to fold back around and finish the underside or backside inside, however you want to call it, of the button placket. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and finish up the button placket piece by putting some seam allowance. Now we do need seam allowance all around here to be able to attach it. So there we are. And just like anything else, we need pattern information. Can't get away with not having pattern information on any piece, no matter how small. And we're going to cut to oh, contrast, right? That's the whole point. <laughs> Where we get that nice contrasting color or fabric. And of course, we need two, one for the right side, one for the left side. And along with that, we need two pieces of interfacing. So just like how we have the interfacing piece with the other button placket, we need to account for our interfacing here as well, just to give it that added stiffness structure to be able to put on the buttons and make the button holes. Okay, now over here on the bodice side, um, I don't need to do too much else. All I really would like to do is maybe put a line to show where the button placket is going to start. And of course, that's going to be a half inch away from our center front. So let's go ahead and put a point in. Up here, as well as down here. And we're just going to draft a line between us. Again, this is just going to serve as a guide to help whoever is going to sew this to know where that button placket is going to be uh, again on this pattern piece. Right click finish drafting once you've done it and then you get that nice guideline. Okay, so pretty easy. It's actually maybe a little bit even easier than the normal way. But now what I want to do is um, show you how to do a v-neck. And let me show you a little bit of an example of what I mean. So in this example, we have a v-neck and a button placket. Okay? Um, you know, this shirt is so loose. Um, that you might not even need to make this a functioning button placket. In fact, I probably think that it's not um, because the neckline is so wide and it's so loose, we don't really have a need for this closure. Um, but let's assume that we do have a need for the closure and we do need to make it functioning. So we're going to have a little bit of a different method here with a V-neck. Um, simply because if we were to fold it back the normal way, like I showed you in the original version, we get a little bit of a gap here that isn't finishing properly. Okay, and I'm going to show you what I mean when we draft it. So we have to do this a little bit different. It's a little bit more complicated to uh, um, uh, uh, work around this neckline, this sort of V neckline. And this is particularly important the sharper the V, and the bigger the buttons. And I'll show you for that, um, how, what I mean by that, by doing a very sharp V and a very large button placket. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get rid of this guy because that's just remnants from our first example. And the first thing we obviously need to do is to cut in our V-neck. Um, how can we make a V-neck button placket without starting with a V-neck? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut in my V-neck and again, I'm gonna make it, um, very, very pointy, very, very dramatic. Um, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to cut out the, the neckline. Now, if I wanted to make my V-neck from here, I could. That's fine. Make it very narrow. But let's assume I'm going to cut off a little bit of the shoulder seam here and cut down. That's also fine. I'm just going to widen out the neck a little bit when I do that. Now, it's perfectly fine, but what I have to do is remember to adjust my shoulder seam here because if I cut off of the shoulder seam here, I'm making this smaller. So I need to make this subsequently an equally small. And I'll get back to that um, once we finish with this. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here. And again, I, you know, if you have specific measurements, you can type them in, but I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, just do a, a sort of quick example. So I'm not really too worried about what the measurements are, but at this point you should know how to apply measurements to that cut if you need to be. Let's get rid of this because I don't need that. Okay, so there's our lovely little v-neck. Let's put in our button placket, okay? Now, um, what I want to do is go ahead and put in my buttons first, right? We need to know sort of how big our buttons are going to be before we know how big our button placket is going to be. So let's go ahead and put some buttons in and let's make them big. Let's make them um, an inch and a half wide, which means they're going to be a three quarter inch radius. And since they're so big, we probably don't have room for a lot. Let's three. Let's do four. We have room for one more. So there's our little buttons along our button pocket, rather big. Okay. So what we need to do is to create this button placket, what I want is I want to kind of continue this line of the neckline and have it go woo all the way out here and continue this sort of slope down into uh, this piece right here, okay? So um, I can do this a few different ways. Um, here we can actually use the extend and parallel tool or we can use another tool that I'm going to use later on anyways. So um, why don't I use the extended parallel? But first let's figure out how wide we need our button placket to be. So I'm going to drag out a guideline just like we did before to try to gauge how big we need it. And I'm going to drop it right there and zoom in. Alrighty, that looks okay. I'm just going to measure how much we need to extend it by to accommodate for this. Okay. 0.9 or about one inch. We'll say 0.9 is fine. And I'll go back and use my extended parallel tool to create that extension. So let's take a look because this might need a little bit of adjustment. As you can see, that line is cutting off the very top of my button, so I need to maybe adjust it slightly. Now I can do this one of two ways. I can adjust the overall neckline by moving this button up or this point up. Let me show you how to do that. We'll just grab our move point tool, grab it, and I don't want to change it like this, so I am going to use my measurement box just to make sure I'm only moving it up and uh, not across. So this needs to be zero, okay? So that's fine. That works really well, but that does alter the entire neckline. Say you don't want to uh, alter the entire neckline. You like the way it was, okay? Well, what we can do is we can place a point um, right on the center front here, like right there, and now when I move this, it's going to isolate this just in this area. And again, I wanted to move it up and not over right or left, so let's make sure that's zero. And so we have just a little change in that line. Again, you can make it smooth or you can make it change. doesn't matter. It's up to you. You're the designer. Just make sure your button's not falling off the edge. Okay, so about halfway done with this, we have um, extended the piece. The actual piece itself um, is good and is going to now accommodate for our little extension over here. Now what we need to do is we need to create the piece that's going to fold back and finish our backing. Okay, so I'm going to use a tool uh, that I believe I showed you in the very beginning of the semester, but I'm, you know, we're going to sort of review what it is, and it's the set half. And if you're working with any sort of pattern piece that is asymmetrical, this is what you're going to want to do to 
um, get both sides, the right and left half of your pattern piece there, and have the ability to change them independently. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the half. And this is going to set the line of symmetry, click once at the top, and then once at the bottom, working clockwise. And as you can see, it sets the sort of line of symmetry or unfold line, and it opens up this other half over here. Now, while it's still in shadow, and you can say it's in shadow, it's just gridded, I can't work on it. I can't do anything or change anything to this side over here. Um, I can only change to the solid side, and anything that I do here ends up happening over here, okay? But that's not what I want, and that's also not what you want if you are going to be working on an asymmetrical piece. Again, that's you know up to you and up to what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is, while this is selected, make sure it's selected, I'm going to click the open half. Now you see, both sides are now workable pieces, okay? And what's nice too is it flipped over my buttons. So I can go ahead and drag out another guideline and sort of drop it where I wanted that button placket to be. And I'm going to double check with measurement, of course, because we always want to double check. So remember that button placket extension I made was about 0.9 inches from the center front. That means my button placket width overall should be about 1.8 inches. So let's see if that's what I get. Now that's very close, close enough for me. So let's zoom out and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along this guideline that I made. I don't need this half anymore, so I'm going to uh, delete it. And I don't want to confuse anyone because we're only going to have one row of buttons. So let's delete this second uh, button row that we got. And now we have this piece, which can easily be folded back. And you can see how when it will, it will match up the neckline perfectly and finish this entire area from neckline to hem evenly. Now if I didn't do this, I just had this part and it finished here, I'd have all this sort of not finished, not backed, and it would look quite messy and not very nice. Um, so with this deep neck and especially very wide button placket, this is the method that we want to use to make sure that everything is going to finish cleanly. Okay, so we have this little, again, little piece that gets folded back and finished right here. Okay, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Oh, I forgot one thing. So remember how I shortened this uh, uh, shoulder seam right here? We got to adjust that here. And again, this is, you know, necklines. You cut the neckline how you want it to look. There's not really a big mystery to it. Cut the neckline first, then do your button plackets or your collars. Um, it, and whatever neckline you want. You wanted a V, you wanted a scoop, you wanted a sweetheart, you wanted a square, so on and so forth. You can just go ahead and cut it. Um, just do remember that this is the apex, so, you know, don't cut it like this unless you want a really saucy shirt. Um, this is fine, you know, it gets a little, it would be certainly saucy. She might wear something underneath it, um, sort of almost like a, a, a vest construction. Vest would be a little bit different um, because it finished a little bit different, but we're going to get that to that in another section, so I don't want to touch on that now. Um, but what we did do to make this neckline is we made this shoulder seam smaller. So we need to adjust this one as well, and that's really important because a lot of people forget they cut in their neckline and they forgot, forget to readjust the back to meet because every seam that we have uh, needs to match up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measurement of my front shoulder seam. Okay, 3.88. That means that I need to make this 3.88 in uh, a full as well. Um, now what I did to create this neckline is I cut away from the high point shoulder or the inner neck outward. Now you can, do, you can also cut away from the shoulder as well, from the low point shoulder in. 
And wherever you do cut from, so if I cut this way in, I want to cut from here in. But I didn't do that. I cut from the neck out. So I want to cut away from this area, just like I did here. Now you can do both, too. So if I want to make this sort of a strap, I could cut away from here. And then just subsequently here, I'd cut away from here and here. So just whatever you did on the front, match it on the back. Long story short. So, okay, let's zoom in here. I know I need to make this a total of 8, 3.88 inches. So I want to place a point here. So I'm cutting away from here. So I'm measuring from here up 3.88 inches. Now, we also have a dart here that is a half an inch. So I do have to take that into consideration. So to make my point of where I'm going to cut, I want to first go ahead and make sure all these are not grading points. Remember, because if I place a point here, they're going to interrupt my ability to measure from this point. So let's turn off their grading. And now that they're turned off, let's grab my point on contour tool and hold down Alt to get my measurement box up. Now what I want is I want a 3.88 inches from here. But remember that we have the dart and the dart is going to be negative space. So this is going to be closed up. So what I actually need to do is take that 3.88 inches and add half an inch that this dart is going to represent because of course that half an inch gets taken out and once that half an inch gets taken out then it will match the 3.88 so um, if we add 0.5 to 3.88 we get 4.11 or 1 Eight. I'm just going to double check that on my calculator. I did it in my head, but I think that's correct. Nope, it's 3.8. Sorry, guys. <laughs> my brain farted and I didn't do that math correctly. Um, so uh, 4.38. And again, remember, when we take out this half an inch here, that'll go ahead and uh, match it back up with our 3.88. Okay. So now that we have this marked down, what I need to do is cut away from my shoulder and blend that cut back into our neckline. Now, inevitably, I'm going to have to widen this neckline a little bit. And of course, I could make it a V-neck too. You can, you can make whatever back neck you want, just like you can make whatever front neck you want. So let's cut, but let's just say I kind of want to keep it pretty similar. So let's try to make a nice little square and then kind of blend it back into what we're doing here. And again, like I said, it's not going to be perfect. Or it's not going to be, it will be perfect. But it won't be matched this exactly. If I uh, widen the neckline on front, I do have to sort of widen this a, uh, a little bit in back. But again, it's going to be pretty close to what it was. Get rid of that. And then there we go. Um, and just to double check, I'm going to click here at the beginning of my shoulder seam and then working in a clockwise fashion, hold shift and then click here. Okay. And what I'm going to do now that this whole shoulder seam segment has been highlighted is go to my design segment length. Now segment length is smart enough to understand that the dart is negative space and it is not going to include it in its measurement. So given that, I should be getting that nice clean 3.88 measurement. Yay! Okay. So we did it right. Um, and now I will conclude uh, with our two other sort of just button placket alternatives. Again, these are sort of a little bit more rare. You might not utilize them as much, but again, I want to give you guys as much sort of freedom to design what you want um, and do what you want in your drafts. So if this is applicable to your student drafts, um, fantastic. If not, well, you know, just a couple other different ways of doing uh, a button placket. All right, guys, 
be well, and I'll come back to you with some other sort of variations of shirt drafts and some fun things that you can do um, to your shirt designs. All right, guys. Bye-bye.